What's up, guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of This Is The Bullies. In the previous episode, uh, we had had a run-in with Robespierre, which had led us to some interesting conclusions. Things are off in this city. It just keeps getting deeper and deeper and deeper. It's like I keep waiting for him till I, I, at this point, I don't think that there's like a, a cop movie drama trope that they won't bring in. We've got people executing animals for fun, guys running torture clubs now. It's just, it's turned into a den of sin and vice. I thought this city was just messed up from the beginning, but no. Oh good, nobody wants to like go home today, that's cool. Let's go to the catalog. I almost made a joke about the dogalog, but I don't know. It just felt so easy. It felt so easy. So we've got Chilla. Oh, I shouldn't have bought that. I'm not going to listen to Chopin. It's just not going to happen. Watercolor Grays by Keith Butler. I'm definitely not going to listen to that. Sure, we'll take one of those. Ooh, this one came in a box that I haven't seen yet. Take a Walk by Walter Flores. Let's take a walk with Walter Flores. The dentist is behind bars. Great job. Here's your bonus. $87,000. Say what? Share half of that with my staff. Request result. We got our raise. We got our job slot. We don't have a lot of good officers around right now. So I may just wait on it. A request result. SWAT team is up and better. Let's make them work three times a day. And then our salary, so we got paid. We came into a bit of money today. We came into a bit of money. They want us to hire another person, but unfortunately... Nobody here is really that good. We've got Kitaru Hudaka, and we've got Tyler Robbins. Although with a couple of days of work, I could probably get them leveled up to the point where they're not so bad anymore. Let's take Robbins, I guess, and this is Shift B, so Robbins will be on Shift A, I guess. Shift A has a lot of really good ringers, too, so I think Shift A will be okay. We're breaking and entering at a suburb. Hello, this is the police. It's Dolores Park. Somebody's in my house. I hear footsteps coming from downstairs. My husband is on a business trip and won't be home for another hour. Please come right now. I know it may be some terrorist who's going to rob and rape me. I've locked myself in a room, but a door won't stop this beast. Send out Oshiro and God Bomber. I think it's going to be a false alarm, but it might actually be a real call. That's the problem with being the police, is that you have to treat everything like it's real. Even if it comes through dispatch and you're like, this is stupid, there's no way this is real, you still have to respond to it, because, like, legally, once they call you, you're on the hook. They can sue the city now if you don't. A crowd has gathered on the steps of City Hall demanding that city officials legalize euthanasia. The protesters are chanting, my life, my death, my choice. City Hall employees report that the people brought homemade signs and the protest is proceeding peacefully. I mean, if the protest is proceeding fine, why would I need to send people out? I don't know why I need to send people out, but they said it was going by peacefully. Then again, it was a request from City Hall. And City Hall is ridiculously corrupt, so it could really be anything. Mr. Parks returned from his business trip an hour early. It was he who was making noise in the house. Well, I'd rather that be the resolution than anything bad happen to anybody. So at least we checked it out. We did our jobs as police officers. Librarian Rolando Boone reported that a young man came in looking for books on chemistry and monographs on explosive substances and publications on extremist topics. Many of the books he requested are prohibited. The guy looks scary, and his eyes made my blood run cold. Send those two over. Uh, it looks like... Oh, it was an unlawful assembly, so maybe they didn't have the permits or whatever they need in order to protest. That's the big hitch right there, is that a lot of... You're allowed to protest under your rights and as a United States citizen, but you need a permit to hold a protest. And so anyways, it can be difficult to get that permit. As soon as the suspect sees the police, he pulls a huge knife from his bag and rushes the library, shouting, You called the pigs. Shoot his ass. He rushed somebody with a knife. Put him down. Ba 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 ba. What is this? Sean Cottrell. Chief Boyd, I represent the interests of a private military corporation which is hoping to attract a significant investment from your city. 
We are preparing an investor presentation and we'd like to demonstrate the inadequacy of police training in matters of public safety. Please understand that this is a business and we can all win here. Give us a couple hours with your weakest and laziest guys and my guys will look like gladiators next to them. I promise. The company will remain in your debt. Alright, send Aquino and God Bomber, although they're probably going to lose stats. I'm trying to get paid. As they said, we're halfway through our tenure right now, and we have not made half the money required in order to beat the game. We're still, like, on par for the bad ending right now, and I don't want the bad ending. I want the happy ending. Let's see here. Suspicious individual. Parishioner Manabush, while she was on her way to church, encountered a group of incredibly strange teenagers. They were running around in costumes, fighting with sticks, and talking like robots. Maybe these crazy kids escaped from a mental hospital. You better catch them and send them back. It's probably just kids playing. Normally, the way I'd handle it is I would just send out one guy. Uh, these guys are like machines. They walked all over us, but we learned a lot. 20 minutes with these guys is better than a whole year at the academy. Mr. Cotterell says he was very pleased with our performance, and he offered us free training at the training complex. What do you think? Yeah, good for you guys. Send him to... Nah, I don't send him. They already got their bonus, and then we got our five grand right there. So we'll bring him on back. That did burn up a little bit of energy, so we might consider... We might consider giving them a day off. That burned their energy hard. So, members of the science fiction club were just having fun at the park. Yep. Homicide. Gladys Shell was enraged about some comment that her colleague Matthew Tallinn made, so she grabbed a stapler and began to beat him over the head with it. Then Miss Shell yelled loudly and lashed out at the secretary. She's having a nervous breakdown. Please hurry. So the subject's boss who called the incident in. All right. Uh, send out some of the weaker cops. Those three should be enough. Drug trafficking. Anonymous tip came in. A large shipment of Colombian coffee is being unloaded, and they're shipping heroin inside the bags of beans. There's only a few guards watching them unload the shipment, so if the police roll up, they might give up without a fight. We'll send you guys along with SWAT, since we have multiple SWAT deployments a day now. That'll help out a little bit. We've got a robbery at the fountains. The elderly Cornelia Davis called in the fit of hysterics. Please come here. I've been robbed. The little bastard stole a treasure. I'll send people out, but I got a feeling about that one. Anytime that they're really, really vague about what they described happened, it's usually, I assume, that it's probably a false alarm. But you know what? We're hustling today, and we're getting the job done. So let's just let people do their job, right? The woman grabbed a second staple in her hands. They look like deadly weapons. Knock her out. <laughs> we'll have Gibbons do it so they don't have any potential civil rights violations. Gibbons, break her jaw. Gibbons is an ogre, man. She comes in, she's like, get out of my swamp. It's my swamp. Don't get. Uh, there's nobody else to help, so we might as well. So the robbery. Cornella Davis is quarreling with the mother of a little boy who climbed into the fountain and took out some coins. I made that wish and your little bastard stole it. Yup, drug trafficante, picante, let me get those drugs, so I can sell them drugs. You know, I started out trying to be a good guy, and now in the pursuit of my half a million dollars. Well, we'll wait till people get back to the station. We don't have anybody to send out on these calls right now. Buka Rika and Oshiro. There we go, now we got people to send. Noise complaint. Respectable sounding man with a sleepy voice called in complaining that fireworks are being set off right in front of his house. They look like bums, but they have huge bags filled with all sorts of firecrackers. I don't trust this. This seems like an ambush. I Call me paranoid if you want, but I don't trust that for a second. Destruction of property. Patricia Buckler says 10 or so people came to her farm with some strange equipment. They wandered around and then they stopped and begun digging a huge pit. Husband didn't approve of people rummaging around on his property, but his attempt to investigate ended in a fight, and he was badly beaten. All right, send out the popo, cause you know, no, we got that vicious flow flow. Probably shouldn't have sent out that many cops, but eh. I'm sure it'll be okay. If Aquino asks for a day off, we're gonna give it to him. If God Bomber asks for a day off, we'll probably give it to him too to get his energy topped off. God Bomber might not need it, but Aquino is definitely gonna need a couple days off. There are three drunk men in the street lighting fireworks and throwing them about when they see the police. One of them pulls out a firework that looks a lot like dynamite and sets fire to the fuse. Tase him. 
Man throws the explosive to one of his friends. The wick is burned halfway down. Taser the man with the explosive and extinguish the fuse. B. Yeah. That's how we do it right there. That's police work. With all the strength of a raging river. Offender caught. Officers unharmed. Good. Everybody gets a level up. It's one of those Oprah level up moments. Everybody gets included. You get one. You get one. End the day. So I got to remember that if Aquino needs a day off, Aquino needs a day off. Disabled society demands increased benefits. Bride suffers happiness heart attack at the registry office and modern art gallery opens modern painting course. We're on board with everybody. One man's trash is another man's treasure. You know, I was hoping Robespierre would be a good guy, but it's starting to seem like he might not be such a good guy. Uh, Beasley says that his antidepressants have run out, so yes, but come in tomorrow. Mosier said it's going to rain. No, you don't get to call in because it's rain. My father got drunk and beat my father, my mother again. It looks pretty bad. Can I have the day off? Yes, but come in tomorrow. Got to do what you got to do, I guess. It's a family matter. Although I think about that sometimes. Man, I'd be heated if I found out my sister was dating somebody that was like hitting her or something like that. Hmm. I'd be going to jail. I'd be in trouble. I'd be in trouble. And two garbage men were emptying some cans near a bus stop. A drunk man came past and thought he'd make fun of him. He tried to make him fight him, so the garbage man got angry. He stuffed him in a can and threw him in the garbage truck, then continued on their route. Guys, you know you can't do that, right? Take the newbie out. Mitchell should be good enough for that one. Take the newbie out and help him... Her? I don't know. It's got earrings. I don't think cops that are male are allowed to have earrings while on the beat. So. You know, our entire force used to be female. And then they all got, like, blown up, shot, or otherwise destroyed. Assault. Two old men were sitting on a park bench playing chess. Suddenly, one of them dashed the pieces, grabbed it, and started beating his opponent over the head with it. An eyewitness called in and was quite agitated. Hurry. The old man's whole head is covered in blood. Police caught up with the garbage truck and pulled it over. Two men in overwalls are laughing in the cab. Guys, the joke's over. Let it go. All right, what's going on, man? Drug man gets out of the garbage truck, takes the dirt off, and attacks the police. And here's the real beast. Scavengers, bastards, you're the worst of all. Filling your bellies at our expense. You should die. I apologize and promise to do better. I don't know. I mean, I probably would have tasered him if it was an option, but I figured I'd go with the unlikely one for me for once. I do enjoy tasering people. Offender caught. Officers unharmed. Good. We have something going down at the Sugar Dream Confectionery at 1850. We don't want any policemen crashing the party. 1500 should be good enough. So at 650, they got some shit going down. It's weird how, like, on time all of their plans are. Meanwhile, I can't get out of bed within, like, two hours of my alarm going off. An elderly employee at Scissors Sisters, an office supply store, reported that a courier brought in a suspicious parcel. The return address is smeared with ketchup or blood. Nobody else can hear it, but I swear I can hear something ticking inside. I'll send some people just in case. I mean, suspicious packages are a big deal if they turn out to be explosives or anything like that. It's not a thing that I take lightly. The city hall. How long do I have between my next upgrades? Okay, a little while. Young female pharmacist said an addict with a length of steel pipe is trying to break into the pharmacy. They'll probably be okay. Although that only leaves me with Peterson, and since my guys won't go out by themselves anymore. I suppose I probably should have just sent Peterson along as well. Inside was a large box of staples and item returned from an unhappy customer. We gotta investigate it. That's the truth. We have to investigate when stuff like that comes through because what if it is something serious, you know? 
I don't like doing police work on what ifs, but yeah, I just broken a window. He's trying to climb through. His feet are sticking out. Sees his legs. He falls out the window. Back onto the street. He drops the scrap of pipe and tries to run. Pepper spray. Get him. Make those eyes sting. Hit him with the cayenne. We should have some people coming back pretty soon. That'll make this a little bit easier as well. Let's see. An old man called in to report that right in front of his favorite park bench, a group of crazy looking people wearing revealing clothing were flopping around on the grass, spitting on the feelings of God fearing Christians and alarming everyone who walks past. Probably not going to go out to that one. Kimberly Adams was celebrating her birthday with some friends and acquaintances. After a long dinner, she started opening her gifts and found a huge dildo. She flushed and then grabbed the sex toy and attacked her friend who gave her the gag present. You bitch, you soulless monster. All of my friends from the seminary are here. Is this what you want them to think of me? Mrs. Adams continued to beat her friend over the head until she made a bloody mess of her scalp. So it just goes to show, kids, dill don't beat your friends with a dildo. Uh, that one's going to be a false alarm. I'm calling it now. Melody man was outraged at a yoga group who decided to hold a master class in the park. Yep. Meanwhile, once again, I could really use your help. I'm trying to expand the ranch, but the adjacent territory belongs to fucking idiots who are asking an insane amount for it. Today I'll be in a regular meeting with them, and I want a bunch of your police officers to come in during the meeting and start asking lots of questions about murder on the property. Maniacs running loose, drug addicts living nearby, stuff like that. Essentially, just help me put pressure on the sellers and knock the cost down a little bit. If the Freeburg police help me, I'll stretch out my hand and offer, say, oh, I don't know. A boost in your budget, enough for five new jobs. Okay? That's not terrible, actually. Every time. Every time. Oh, that was the Sands one anyways. Who cares about that? It'll be fine. Girl is pounding on her friend's head with all of her might. The victim hasn't been conscious for a while. A huge crowd has gathered around, and it's impossible to get near the fight. Forced through the crowd of the fight. Saying the police, the assailant comes to her senses, jumps up and makes a break for the back door, pushing people out of the way with her sex toy. Uh, arm the taser and run after the girl. Oh, man. Sometimes somebody gotta get beat with a dildo. I don't know. Well, there's no bodies, so that's acceptable. $1,500 for doing something easy-peasy, lemon-squeezy. They're on their way out to the edge of town. Robert Devlin. Chief, we love playing the part. In the end, we have ourselves believing in it. We really wouldn't mind running a little extra cash on the side. We don't even ask for a thank you, but when we all kind of fainted, we deserved a couple extra hundred. Mr. Moneybag just hissed at us and said to fuck off. And then he was on the verge of making the deal of a lifetime. That's not how things are done. We're going to the bar. Apparently, they're all drinking now. My officers have taken the day off to go drinking. A noise complaint in the ghetto. An angry man phoned in, yelling about his neighbors. He's been hearing terrible ringing and shouting coming from every side of his house. My ears are going to explode. You have to stop them right away. They also have a shooting in the suburbs. Just can't call to complain about a drunken neighbor who decided it'd be fun to go out after sundown and shoot beer cans in his backyard. Get that drunk behind bars before he kills somebody. Yeah, we do need to respond to this. I should have sent Robbins, too. There's no point keeping Robbins by themselves here. The call came from Clark McClellan, a former psychiatric patient who recently stopped taking his medication. Well, at least he didn't get killed. The police around here just kill crazy people, so, you know. Take that with a grain of salt. There was a crazy guy with a pipe just, like, wandering around, like, screaming at the sky the other day. Not the other day, like a year or two ago. And they just, like, filled him full of lead. They didn't even try. I'm like, it's one dude with a pipe, and there's like 20 of you. Can't somebody like tase him or something? I don't know. A couple of you tase him, or I'm sure that many of you could get that pipe away from him. Well, nah, just ba 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 ba. Just took him out. I can't judge too harshly because I've been doing that the entire playthrough. But still, it seemed like they probably could have resolved that a little bit more peaceably. It was just a crazy guy. Not even that crazy. He's just schizophrenic and off his meds. He was murdered for being ill. Drug addiction in city increased by 
Theater director, we need fresh faces and new voices. Freeberg Chess Master reaches the World Cup. Interested about these new jobs. That's what I want to hear about. Mr. Boyd, this is for you. That's it? What's it? Uh, this is from our guy. What? It's from the private detective. What? Oh, no. No, Mr. Boyd. It's from an Agent Dixon. Fine. I'm sorry I couldn't swing by before I left, but I'll definitely be back to celebrate your retirement, Ethan. Bobby Flash Diamonds and Thieves. Bobby Flash and the Card Shop. Bobby Flash and the Cats Club. Bobby Flash and the Temptations. Ah, that's what I need. Uh, he's too tired and wants to go home. Can I go home? Yes. Take a day off, man. That's fine. Your energy level is really, really low right now. And I can't have people doing dumb stuff and getting themselves whacked. Man, this shift is looking good right now. This shift is looking really good. Mafia sent over the share from the cocaine. I'm going to take that. Jack, I just had a very pleasant conversation with Mr. Devlin. He was incredibly flattering about your work and donated a large sum of money to satisfy the needs of the department. It's enough for your staff to expand by five rather than two people. Keep up the good work. Okay. Well, we'll hire you for B. We'll hire you for A. I think we have the maximum slots, which is why it's uh, not letting us do five. I think that was a get-out-of-jail-free card, essentially. If people are struggling with the game and you do that one right there, you can save yourself. Mr. Boyd, I'm Ron Atticus. We haven't yet had the pleasure, but I'm sure you've passed by my lovely skyscraper from time to time. It's a wonderful building, and I'd like to expand that surrounding territory. I have received all the necessary documents for the demolition of a small neighboring park. The crew is standing by, but as always, the rabble are causing a lot of problems. Ladies with strollers and dog lovers claiming they use the park every day. I wouldn't want you to take me in for accidentally burying one of the protesters under a layer of concrete. Send some men to break these bums up, I'd be very, very grateful. That's a lot of people to send up, man. That's like a lot, a lot of people. Like, I'm gonna do it because I'm in a money-making haze right now. And it's early on in the day, so hopefully we'll get away with it. Every time. Every time. It's so consistently predictable. Every. Single. Time. Like, I wish the developers would not make it so predictable. Every time you take one of these jobs, they do that. Or they're like, oh, look, here's another thing where everybody's being murdered at the exact same time. And it's 100% of the time. There's no variation. It happens every single time. A witness says that the dark sedan abruptly stopped in the middle of the street. A man with a pistol jumped out and began firing through the window of the restaurant. The caller th thought it seemed like someone was firing back, but he wasn't sure. Oh, well. Just as I thought, Mr. Boy, we make a great team. With my resources and your abilities, we could work wonders together. I'll be glad to provide you with any services I can for a modest fee. It's the least I can do. Ooh, 12 Gs. Yes, please. Fender escaped. Oh, civilian killed. Oh, well. I made $12,000. Seems like an equitable trade. Sure, why not? Six-year Alex went to the playground in the park with her father and disappeared in broad daylight. This will put Luckett on lead. Mole, Beasley, and James on secondary. Uh, there's no backup to be had, so you're just going to have to make it happen, Captain. You got SWAT with you. How much more backup could you need, you know? Good to go. Gibbons hit 600. Nice even number. Getting good at her job. Getting very, very good at her job. Pretty much the only person on our force that can rival Numata and also, uh, what's his name? Atticus Corporation. Eight of your lucky subordinates can go to a luxury house party and relax properly. 
Safe firing. If you want to get rid of an employee, we can offer a place for them in the Atticus security detail. We even write a letter of their resignation. Detective slot. Atticus Corporation would be happy to make a donation on your behalf so you can get another detective. A bank account which the prosecutor's office cannot possibly access. If anybody's investigating you, they won't be able to find your money. Well, should I put all of it in? It doesn't seem like there's a big downside to me just dumping all my money in the secret account. See, that's the catch right there. You can only put it in by increments of 100. God, this is going to take forever. Can I hold it down? Okay, there we go. That's better. So how do I take money out? Oh, the secret account just like stays there. Yeah, so I'm not really seeing a downside. I should probably hide all my dirty drug money. Just keep like 40 or 50 grand for a rainy day, but put the rest of it into the account. It's nice to have corporate friends, man. This is working out great. I'll probably keep... Let's say 60 grand in pocket. And then we'll keep the rest of it in the account. Hide it over there. If we have the opportunity to get better officers, by the way, I would love to hire them now that I have a way to fire them easily and quickly. I'll probably get rid of some of the weaker officers to make it happen. Our investigation is started on an abduction. Mafia assignment. Jack, you got into our business when you opened an investigation regarding an abduction. It'd be better for both of us that the whole thing is settled by 1325. Hopefully 2500 will cover your expenses. Robbery. Attempted robbery. A teller noticed three hooded men coming to the bank carrying sports bags. The frightened teller whispered into the phone, hurry up, I think they're trying to rob us. Why else would they be carrying the bags? Um, send out a couple B-team members. We'll see what happens over there. Dennis Chapman reported that his neighbor, Marlon Plouffe, is holding two young girls against their will within his bomb shelter. The old fool is absolutely out of his gourd. He's convinced that the aliens are coming any day now to prepare us, or destroy us, and he's preparing for the coming disaster. He built a bomb shelter, filled it with food, and somehow got those two girls down there. I hear them crying, wanted to help, but Plouffe threatened me with his shotgun, said not to intervene in his affairs. Mr. Chapman also explained the suspect needed women to repopulate the earth after the disaster. Good lord. Unbreakable. They alive, damn it. What's funny is in that first episode of that show, I was like, if they don't use that as their theme song for the rest of the season... They have made a huge market mistake. I don't really have anything else going on, so I've got fraud over here. So unfortunately, we're probably going to miss a couple calls. Some men came from the gym and were stopping the bank to take out some cash. Near the bomb shelter is a man with shifty eyes wringing his hands. Go away, vile aliens. You'll never get me and my wives. Sir, you have to help us or we'll save the world. The president is waiting for you. Sometimes you just gotta fool somebody to get the gun away from them. I don't really know what else to say about it. We've got fraud. We've got assault over here. That one. So, anyways. Evelyn Farrell missed her flight because she mixed up the travel dates. Her contract with Top Adventures clearly stated payments could only be reimbursed if the customer canceled the trip in advance, not a month after the fact. So, yeah. Evelyn Farrell mixed it... Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, they're going to put the same thing in there as what we already had. Oh, the Atticus Corporation building, okay. A public indecency and we've got assault. So with assault... Senior writer Ivan Bykov attacked a young editor who was reading his manuscript. The madman tried to strangle him. Send Gibbons and Godbomber out. Several witnesses reported that a naked man is riding a motorcycle through the city. He's carrying a pistol and shooting into the air while he laughs hysterically. He's very wild and dangerous. He almost knocked over a girl who was crossing the road. Then he took aim and tried to shoot her. Born to be wild. Might be taking the... the tenor and the theme of that song a little bit too wide. A pizza delivery man picked up an order this morning and didn't return for the rest of the day. The manager said the corps has been attacked and robbed a few times and they are very worried about the young man. Missing person is Robert Derry who is well known for his carelessness. He's also 
been fired for absenteeism. And we got cops all over the place right now. But the nice part is that we actually have a full department that we're able to work with. I will probably fire what's her name from the other shift or what's his name from the other shift. I could send more people out, but I think they'll be okay. It's public indecency, man. Get hand on Wang and arrest the fool. If you weren't ready to have, you know, somebody dangle brain on your forehead briefly, why did you become a cop? Bikov is sitting on top of the editor strangling him. Pepper spray the foo. Let him have it. Lay him down low. Got a couple people back in here. Legal arms sales. A tipsy bar visitor reported that a bartender tried to sell him a gun. Essentially, I was sitting there drinking, complaining about my wife who's insisting on a divorce. Bitch threatened to take away my children and says I'm a drunk bastard and I don't appreciate her. So I tell all of this to the bartender and he listened and nodded and he goes, My friend, you got to teach that bitch a lesson. Come on, I have exactly what you need in the back. So he takes me, I follow him, he's got a box with a bunch of guns. Pick one, he says, I'll give it to you cheap, but I said I'll think about it when I give you guys a call. Alright, so we got armed people over here with firearms. We'll go ahead and send out... Missing person, Mr. Derry met some girls on the beach and decided to stay and party with them. It's a false alarm, okay. Alright, I mean the game's not that bad once you actually have like a full docket of people out here ready to go to ride out and take care of business on behalf of the department. Bar is crowded and smoky, and there's a skinny guy lying on the floor. The bartender is wiping the counter with a dirty rag. Shake his pulse. Bartender drops his rag and puts his hand into the bar. The skinny guy on the floor starts to vomit. Keep your hands where I can see him. So we got non-automatic weapons. I have the Mafia sell it. I think it's only worth like 1200 bucks. Reckless endangerment. There's a group of sports cars racing down the road at insane speeds. They'll kill anyone who gets in their way. These guys won't stop for nothing. Okay, send out a couple officers. Three new frames on the abduction report. Gladys McCain, the girl's mother. My husband and I are divorced and he's suing for full custody of Alex. My lawyer says his chances are zero, and I think he knows it too. Now it looks like he decided not to wait for the courts. This takes what he wants, the al like alcoholics always do. But how could he do this to his own daughter? He must have had one of his cronies grab her. They're always hitting the bottle and ready for trouble. Him and his whole family are a bunch of drunks in a bunch of trouble. Firstly, I've been sober as a judge for a month now. I go to Alcoholics Anonymous meetings all the time. Second, I only let Alex out of my sight for a second. It was Timmy Gall or Timothy Gallagher he came up. He's great. We talked for a second while my daughter was playing by the hill. When I turned to check on her, she was nowhere. Completely gone. I think it's Gladys who made off with her. She's already trying to set the judge against me and says I'm unfit to be a father. Yeah, this is his friend from A. I saw Gordon and his daughter at the park. We talked for a minute. He was going to walk with her down the hill, so I shook his hand and left. Adrian is a teenager in a corn costume. But is he head or is he fieldy? I was handing out leaflets in the park. I noticed two men drinking whiskey straight from the bottle sitting on the bench near a roller coaster, and I saw a girl in a blue dress. She was playing near the hill, and she bent down to pick something up from the ground. Then an elderly woman walked up, took the girl by the hand, and walked away. The woman looked like she was dizzy. Rick Holmes, the valet. I didn't see anything suspicious. A drunk driver hit a trash can in the parking lot, left some paint behind, and just drove off like nothing happened. Okay. One thing at a time over there. Shouldn't be any more calls today, I don't think. Should be about sorted. Good. Reckless endangerment went solidly. And we'll end our day. That's it for us. I'm out of time. My name is Splattercat. This is whoop whoop. This is the police. I'll see y'all next time. Bye, everybody.